cannot end this year without telling you this story because it is insane. It is genuinely bonkers. It involved four storage lockers full of guitars that were totally for sale. This story involves the most money I've ever offered for a collection of guitars. It is the largest collection of guitars I've ever tried to buy. And it is also just the most tense negotiation uh, that ultimately you fell through, but I have to tell you this story. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. I seek out amazing guitars all around the country, and I try to bring you guys along when I can. Now, make sure you subscribed, and we'll get into this story because it is genuinely crazy. It was early March 2021, and I received a phone call from a woman, we'll call her Sarah. Sarah called me and said, I live in Hawaii. I just found out that my late stepdad, who passed away a few weeks ago, owns four storage units in Texas that are full of guitars. And she sent me a list, she sent me some pictures. She said, can you help me sell them? Would you be willing to buy them? Help me figure out what they are. I found you through YouTube, can you help me? So she started sending me pictures and I immediately thought, this cannot be real. This has to be just made up or there's some scam afoot, it's crazy. The name she gave me, I checked, it seemed to check out with who she was, and then she started sending me pictures of these guitars, and it was floor to ceiling, just walls and like all the way packed up with Fender Tweed cases, Gibson Chainsaw cases, Taylor, uh, the alligator kind of looking cases. There were amps, there were old Fender combos. There were, in the end, there were 40 or so pieces of gear that were packed into these that she could get pictures of. I mean, there were so many guitars packed in there. Now, the thing that I immediately wanted to tell her was, okay, urgency is the biggest threat to you. You will sell things too quickly and you will sell them for too little. So if you can, you need to push this off. And what's interesting is, and where this deal still feels a bit manufactured, is that she said, well, I'm in, uh, I'm in Texas uh, from Hawaii. I'm only here for three days. Uh, I need to get this settled in three days. And I told her, if that is true, you need to either extend your trip or if that is true, you are going to lose a bunch of money on this deal. And so it continued to snowball out into um, just constant pressure. She texted me over and over and over and kept saying, I need you to do it. I need you to do this. Give me a number. How much do you think you would buy these for? And I told her, I was like, I just give me a few minutes. I'm going to do my homework. And that's where I built out this spreadsheet that I'll show you. I built out this spreadsheet that was Carvin guitars and Fender guitars and obscure, uh, there were Takaminis in there and there were all kinds of guitars mixed in there. So I went through, I did market research, I did how I uh, analyzed these guitars and I figured I typically make two columns. I make what the thing is worth and what I want to pay for the thing and then any notes or things that I find particularly around, are these hot right now? Are they, have they cooled off? And so I built out my list and I was, I mean, I'm in the middle. It also happened right in the middle of when we were building out this studio. So it was just a crazy time for me to try and manage to add in such a crazy um, task of just figuring out what these guitars are, figuring out how much they were. And it ultimately was, okay, if this is true, I need to come up with a cash number and then I need to get my ducks in a row to get across the country because it's about 2000 miles for me from here to where they were in Texas. She texted me, she kept finding more guitars. There were guitars at her mom's house. And as the story unfolded, it continued to just feel weird and like it didn't quite make sense. Her mom had gotten remarried and her mom had remarried a guy who was in the military and he'd lived kind of all over the country. He was not a guitar player. And so that's what was so surprising to them is that all of a sudden they, after he dies, there was a secret. They didn't know that, you know, uh, the wife had not known that these even existed. And then that they're in, they're in Texas and they live far, they live closer to me. And so basically it just got to where this whole thing seemed really, really um, crazy, manufactured, made up. So I compiled my list from all the pictures that she'd sent me, from all of the notes and pictures and questions that I'd asked. We'd had countless phone calls. I'd asked her about a lot of stuff and there were a lot of like, just really wiggly movie videos that are turning and um, and I was trying to peek, pixel peep and freeze the screen and look at stuff and, um, and it was really hard to tell. There were definitely some old Fender amps um, from the notes that she said there were some bandmasters, there was an old pro reverb. There was stuff that was cool and hadn't been reissued so it had to be real and then there were some others that 
looked like. I think there was a little Walter in there. Uh, there was another 5e3 clone. There were some other really interesting amps that I hadn't seen before. And so, anyway, I compiled my list. I came up with 40 couple pieces of gear. I know that there's a lot more in there because there was a whole bunch of studio gear and there were a bunch of uh, carbon like monitors. But from the things that I could see, I came up with about 40 instruments that I thought were worth in the mid-20s in full retail value. Now, I am a YouTuber. That is my full-time job. I buy and sell guitars, uh, but I also have a wife and three kids. I'm in my mid-30s. I do not have just 20 grand sitting around. So I scraped together every penny I could that we would feel safe putting into this gear that would take me a year or two to sell through and we would get our money back plus uh, you know, a 20 or 30% profit margin. It would be worth my time, energy, effort uh, to do this. So I came up with my number and I got on the phone with Sarah she asked if I'd come up with my number and I told her I had and how I justified my price. I shared my spreadsheet with her. Well, I shared a copy of my spreadsheet. I didn't want her to see my notes and my numbers because I'm not trying to take advantage of her, but I don't want her, I don't want to give her all of the information for free uh, because I was hoping to at least in some way get some compensation out of this because she genuinely knew nothing about this and I knew that she stood to make some money. Uh, now, along the way, somewhere, her mom had gotten the idea that these were worth tons of money, like hundreds of thousands of dollars. I think realistically, the whole collection as I saw it was probably $40,000, $45,000 worth of retail value. So I came in and I offered my number. I offered $21,000. I'll put the exact number of what I offered in here. It was like $20,750 or something like that. And um, she said, that's, that's way too low. And I was like, no, 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 that's, that's what I think retail is. Ultimately, this deal fell apart when I came back with my numbers. I came in in the low 20,000s of what I thought this was actually worth. And she came back and said, no, I have to have $40,000. And I immediately said the question that all of us would ask. How did you come up with that number? And her, uh, her explanation, her justification for that price was really unsatisfying. And it, it, it blew my mind. Basically... She had told me that no one knew about this deal. She told me that no one knew about those guitars. She told me that no one in her family knew about values of guitars. And all of a sudden, someone gave them this number that it was forty or $50,000 was the value. And they, and she seemingly turned against me, thinking that I was super lowballing her and that I was going to just make a killing off of this. When realistically, like I was going to make 20 or 30% for a lot of work and a lot of risk. And so that's what I couldn't get my head around. I couldn't get my head around where this value came from. And so all of the parts of this started to fall apart, especially where did that number come from? Who told you that number? Um, and all of a sudden, there are all of these other parties that know about these guitars. And all of a sudden, there are all these people that are starting to buy these guitars. Anyway, ultimately, that's where it just all fell apart. And she started chopping down her list. Well, you know, this guy came by the storage unit while we were unloading and he offered me this much in cash, which all of that started to tip me off that I think that this was a scam. Um, I, I have a suspicion that there was something really unethical or something really suspicious was going on because all of these guitars in a storage unit and having interviewed Robbie Z twice this year talking about his guitar collection and what happened to it, what I suspect happened was that these guitars belonged to someone else and that they were being fenced and they tried to be fenced through me, but I probably had too much reach and that's why it all went cold for me. So basically she started chopping down the list saying, well, these couple guitars are off, these couple guitars are off. Oh, a cousin showed up that knew about these guitars because the story changed early on. No one knew anything. It was, you know, not even the wife knew about it. And then all of a sudden, well, there's eight more guitars there at the house if you want to see. Okay, so did he play guitar or did he not? Because now there are guitars at the house. And so all of it just continued to snowball out out of control to where I retracted all offers. I, I backed out of the whole thing. Um, and keep in mind, like I was on the line renting a U-Haul. My plan was to fly to Texas, get a U-Haul, go there, load everything up, haul it back here to Virginia. Because there was something happening. Oh, it was like the week of Easter or something that I would have to um I would have to just immediately jump on it. So anyway, I missed out on 40 couple guitars. 
I don't think I missed out though. Um, I haven't, I've set up some Google alerts and I've set up some reverb uh, searches for these guitars. They haven't resurfaced again, but none of them were that notable. I did get an email from her the other day saying that she still has a couple of guitars she's trying to sell. I could be totally wrong. This could be totally just whatever, but there were too many red flags for me back to back to back. And so, I mean, there are a couple adages that just seem profoundly true. Like if it's too good to be true, it probably is. One of the ways that these cons seem to play out in my experience is that the foot keeps firmly on the gas. You have to move quickly. You have to do it. I only have three days. I'm going back to Hawaii. And so for me, I... In those moments when the pressure feels so intense and the stakes seem so high, uh, I don't know. I just find that patience wins, that slow and steady wins the race. Again, there's all these adages that are deeply true, but they feel super cliche in this moment. So that's one of my craziest stories of 2021. I, I spent about 48 hours booking flights, looking for U-Hauls trying to value these guitars, trying to work it out. And it wasn't until the very last minute when everything got chopped out from underneath me that I was like, oh, I think that this is a con. I think that something is going on, something sketchy, because they wanted me to pay in cash. They didn't want a cashier's check. And so all of it just seemed like this is too much of a, this is too much of a risk for my family. It's too just crazy. All of it. There's, you never get your bearings. And so that's part of it. So I don't know. What do you think? Was this a con? Was it just me being overly cautious? What would you do if you were me? If you got that phone call and it was, Hey, there's four storage units. You can have them first pick. Here's a list. Here's some pictures. If it seems so good, so amazing, would you risk your, you know, your wealth and your kind of financial well-being of your family? Would you jump on a plane? Would you rent a rental car? Would you do all that? Would you pay in cash? All of these questions. Let me know in the comments down below. Let's have a discussion about these kinds of deals. It's crazy. I don't know what to do with it. I'm glad I didn't do it. Um, there are a couple of guitars that I wish I would have owned, but in the end, I feel like I dodged a bullet. So anyway, thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy. I'm the Guitar Hunter. Go fill the world with music and friendship.